Good morning, guys. I right, we're all sparkly. Today, we're going to talk about hematocrit. Is the rise in hematocrit on TRT a good thing or a bad thing? Now, the answer to that question is it can be a good thing and it can be a bad thing. When it's a good thing, it's not always a good thing. And when it's a bad thing, it's not always a bad thing. So, let's delve into it. What is hematocrit? Essentially, it's the concentration of red blood cells within the circulatory volume called the plasma. Now, you can imagine red blood cells are a physical thing. And the more physical things within a liquid, the viscosity of that liquid is going to increase. Now, what's pumping that blood around to the tissues? Yes, you guessed it, the heart. Now, do we want to pump around oily blood or optimal blood? The answer to that question is obviously optimal. So if you increase the viscosity above optimal, that poor heart is going to struggle. And we don't want the heart to struggle because we like our hearts. It keeps us alive. So... Too thick blood is not a good thing. Optimal blood is a good thing because we want to deliver oxygen to the tissues. So, testosterone is involved in erythropoiesis. The kidneys release erythropoietin and the bone marrow produces the red blood cells. This involves testosterone, estrogen and DHT. So some guys with low testosterone have anemia or a relative anemia. So you can argue and rightly argue that optimizing hematocrit with testosterone replacement therapy will improve the hematocrit to optimal and that will improve outcomes. Makes sense, doesn't it? So wherein lies the problem? As we've just said, thick blood. We don't want to have thick blood causing strain on the heart and strain on those friable cardiovascular blood vessels. We don't want to increase the risk of heart attacks and strokes. Does this not make sense? So the most effective way, you guessed it, of achieving stable male androgen levels and a healthy hematocrit is what? daily subcutaneous testosterone cypionate and HCG injections. And you need to carefully titrate your dose according to effect to optimize your levels. You need to stay hydrated. You need to engage in regular physical exercise. And yeah, you guessed it, everybody's pet hate, cardio. So let's go into endurance athletes. Endurance athletes often have something called a sports anemia. Now, what is that? Essentially, what it is, is they create more plasma than the average person to remove the waste products of muscle metabolism to the kidneys to be excreted. They do not have a corresponding increase in red blood cell count because the body's going, no, hold on. And the fundamental principles of homeostasis dictate that we don't, gonna, we don't increase red blood cell production to just keep going and keep going and keep going because the body is incredibly complicated and it's all about what? Yeah, you guessed it, balance and stability. Optimizing your genetics, optimizing your physiology for long-term physical and psychological well-being. So these endurance athletes, what do they do? Well, they cheat. As Nate Diaz says, everybody's on steroids. So when they cheat, what do they do? All sorts. But EPO. EPO increases red blood cell concentration. Now, what are these naughty endurance athletes trying to do? They're trying to optimize their physiology. So with their relative anemia, because they create more plasma than the average person, they are actually trying to raise their hematocrit to that of a normal person, an optimal person. They don't want a rise in blood pressure. 
Now, Lance Armstrong tells a story about Tour de France guys getting up at 3 a.m. because they feel the deleterious effects of a rise in hematocrit. Going for a quick cycle at 3 a.m., that sounds sensible. Just to get that blood pumping around. So, it is complicated. So, we're going to give you an example of one of my guys on testosterone replacement therapy to highlight how important it is and why good is not always good. This guy is in his late 30s. He is flying on TRT. He feels great physically and psychologically. His levels are perfect. What are perfect levels? Perfect levels are particular to you, your physiology, your genetics and your requirements. But this guy, every time I see him, I'm flying, Doc. Happy days. So we had a call. It's a few months ago now. And he was worried. He'd been peeing blood. Now, there are lots of causes for hematuria. But obviously, me being his TRT doctor, he was worried about his hormones and his subsequent metabolic markers. Now, alongside his healthy male androgen levels, he had an optimal hemoglobin and hematocrit. Hemoglobin, 169. Hematocrit, 0.5. Now, on testosterone replacement therapy, a hematocrit above 54 is a contraindication. Now, it's a not quite as clear cut as that, but that's what the BSSM guidelines state. And people often complain of negative symptoms with a hematocrit above 50. And the higher it gets, the more often people complain. Shortness of breath, fatigue, dizziness, etc. So this guy flying. So what on earth is going on? Well, he was thoroughly investigated by the nephrologist and they could not find a cause for his hematuria. Now, what happened the preceding weekend? He went on a three day bender. It was his stag do. Drinking heavily. I don't know what else he did. If you did do that, you're a boy, naughty boy. Um, so, yeah, he celebrated giving up his freedom to be betrothed to his wonderful wife, now wife. And yeah, what did he do? Not only did he poison himself with alcohol, he obviously became very dehydrated. Now what's plasma? Liquid within the circulatory system. So you can imagine he put incredible strain on his kidneys. And it's likely because obviously there was no pathology identified from all of the investigations that he had it was the hematocrit elevating to super physiological levels that caused his hematuria. So hopefully you can now see that you can have healthy hormone levels, an optimal hematocrit, but outside factors such as dehydration can have a deleterious effect on your physiology. Now, I propose this is one of the reasons why we've seen so many bodybuilder deaths recently. Now, alongside the fact, obviously, they're massively distorting their physiology and they're going to place extra strain on their heart, having to pump that blood around the system. They get a rise in hematocrit from using anabolic steroids, which is deleterious to health. Then add in cutting, then add in doing diuretics. And it's not too dissimilar to my case study, is it? You can imagine these guys are absolutely insulting their physiology. Now, testosterone is wonderful if you need testosterone. Testosterone is wonderful if you carefully titrate your dose according to effect and you concentrate on lifestyle, diet and exercise. Rinse and repeat every day. Consistency is key to success. However, if you do things that are deleterious to your health, 
you are going to have a negative consequence. Now, one of the drawbacks of testosterone replacement therapy is it's a fixed dose. So physiology can adapt. This is the reason why people at high altitude do not have a massively increased risk of cardiovascular disease. Genetics, epigenetics, and the ability of the body to adapt. The fundamental principles of homeostasis. Are we starting to understand now that it's incredibly complicated? And if you're giving yourself a fixed dose of testosterone and your levels are perfect and you're flying and then you do something stupid, there will be a consequence. Get it? Understand that physiology is complicated. Be your own best friend. Look after yourself. Consistency is the key to success. Lifestyle, diet, exercise. Rinse and repeat. So don't listen to idiots. Listen to the doc.